Before you this year, we featured Dr. Tamara Luigi of Twin Spires to tell us all about the organization. Today, we welcome two out of record guests to tell us about Alan's daughters, Essie and Stephanie. Al Harris, a member and Ventry C. Blanchett, Communications Reporter. Welcome. Good morning, Essie and ladies. Welcome, ladies. Good morning. It's our pleasure. pleasure. So what can you tell us about the launch ceremony taking place? The launch ceremony taking place. Oh, I want to invite everyone, and I'm very excited about it. You, you, you could say I flew to Bar from Barbados to St. Kitts for the launch, yeah. and it's going to be this Saturday, 1 o'clock, at the Agriculture Department in the Greek, and um, I'm expecting not just women, you can bring your children, you can bring your husbands, and for those who have the stalkers, you can come and learn too. <laughs> it's, it's open for everyone. Family now that's extreme, but I, I, I can't do it. I was Bring them along. I don't bring think stalkers all. need invitations, by the way. Bring them along. <laughs> <them all. laughs> but I do want to share a little bit about what we do at Helen's Daughters so persons yeah. can know what they can expect. Um, so we're a nonprofit organization that's based in St. Lucia and we cater to women in agriculture. So whether you have your backyard garden, whether you have a farm, whether you are producing products that come from the ground, nature, um, this is an organization that invests in women in that sect um, through training, um, through funding opportunities, and through networking with the experts throughout the region. So we're based in St. Lucia. We've done work here in St. St. Nevis and also in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I'm excited about, Carol would have mentioned the launch tomorrow for St. Kitts because there's a lot of buzz around the St. Lucia launch, which was excellent, but we cannot wait to share our plans for the Federation, um, what that can look like um, for women in agriculture. So ladies, either of you can answer this question. What has been the impact of Helen's Daughters St. Kitts and Nevis chapter on our local female farmers? Demis, you want to start first? So, so I, I can go. So we really have, we have an executive here on the, on the island um, that is really made up of uh, female farmers and female in agriculture on St. Kitts and Nevis. So we have a good mix um, throughout the Federation. And so already our women have gone through the Our Farmers Academy where it's an intense program where they learn about nutritional marketing. They learn about um, the best ways for growing certain crops. They learn about uh, developing their business skills and starting their own businesses and how to get grants and funding. Um, so architicians and divisions have been exposed to that. Um, they've also visited some of the best farms here um, throughout the Federation to see some of the best practices. So it's a growing number. We have some set plans that we are going to announce at the launch. Um, so you have to come to here. But I'll just have Carol maybe share her experience because she was a part of the Farmers Academy um, and she would have joined and been inspired so she can share more about what the impact was like for her. What I will say to you that I joined the Farm Academy Helen Daughters because I'm a volunteer with the Sink is Nevis Association of Persons with Disabilities. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we want to do is use agriculture as a means of empowering persons with disabilities. So the training that I received, because I said, how can I help them if I'm not too familiar with some of the yes. technical areas? So the training that I will get, I will use it to assist persons with disabilities, and we're hoping to expand it to include the elderly. And um, because it was so interesting, I started to not just see it as being somebody helping somebody else, but I used it myself. So I was learning virtually because it was overseas, but I was able to implement everything. It was very hands-on. And I had some things going in my backyard. I was, my confidence was built. Yes. And we started selling things from my backyard. Nice. So yeah, in that short space, of that eight-week training. And then my sister was here. So everything I learned, I passed on. I said, you know, I did this thing today. I'm very talkative. I didn't know. <laughs> so everything I learned, I'm sharing with my family members. Yes. And so my sister, she went on. She registered as a farmer. 
and she's starting something. So for her and for other women, it's going to be a mean of earning income because yes. at the end of the, especially during the pandemic, when lots of things were slow, yes. we were trying to find somewhere. How can you earn a living without having to, in a sense, depend on a man? Because your income might be small, yeah. but as a woman, you can free yourself and, and you wouldn't have to tolerate some people you don't want to have in your life. Yeah. And so with agriculture and then what they taught us, you can specialize, find that niche market and they even yes. taught us marketing. So you might have something just in your, you, you could be in town mm -hmm. and you could be growing some seasoning in, in some, you know, recycled, some, some containers. Yes. And just the way you market what you have, you can make a difference. And then some of my other, um, I'll call them friends, because we, we do a network, we're like family now. Yeah. They, they shared what they're doing. And I mean, I learned it's like duck eggs. I didn't realize we sell duck eggs in Federation. I didn't know that either. You didn't leave it. Okay. And there are lots of different unique um, local drinks that people were making, and they were sugar-free. So for some of the diabetics, yes. some of the participants have products that that um, that pretty interesting. So I was like, wow, we have so much here. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's for us to get um, probably in the supermarket, because for some of us, we sort of call people and ask, you know, I guess it's informal. Yes. So for now, there are lots of talent out there. There are lots of people doing things on their own. And I guess as Helen Daughters grows and we have more exhibition, I, I'm, I'm hoping we'll see some of what we have, you know, um, in, in Barbados. Because, yes. again, for me, I, whenever I come to St. Kitts, I, I rush and I eat all the things I shouldn't <laughs> because I don't see them there. So I'm okay. hoping through Helen Daughters and the connection between St. Kitts, St. Lucia, yeah. St. Vincent, that we'll have some exchange of products. Now, one of the things that you said reminded me, both you and Dentrici, about the quest for independence of women. Reminded me of the point that Dr. Louise made when we talked to her about Helen's Daughters, the fact that the program does seek to empower women uh, to create a better life for themselves yes. outside of that dependence on males. Um, what I want to know from you now is, in terms of the requirements for membership, or any woman who's interested in joining Helen's Daughters, what are there, if there are any, and um, how many members do you currently have? Well, what I would say that I, I didn't even have, like, a fam. I just had some things in my backyard yeah. that I just had. And some people, so you, there's anyone, you just apply, but the demand was so high, I applied in 2021, and I didn't get through. So, yes, there's, so there's, there's lots yeah. of women. Yeah, so you... I guess you just nice. have to be female, and um, I think we had each, I think each cohort would be about um, 20, 25 persons. Oh, nice. yeah. So it's a good group, and we, 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 we interact through social media, mm -hmm. and we're bouncing off of each other. Anybody know where you could get such and such? Anybody? It's very interactive. Mm -hmm. And again, because it's women, Nobody, it wasn't a stiff class where if you hear a child in the background, mommy, I want it. You know, it was, it was very relaxed. And because we recognize women, you have to juggle what you do financially and a family. Yes. So it was, it was very open, it was very relaxed, and you didn't feel like you were in a classroom, and it was at night. And sometimes we go out till 9 o'clock. But it feels so relaxing, and the trainers were actual practicing farmers. Mm. There's um, Mackie nice. Trost from Nevis, A1 Farms, and he was the best one. That's the name I remember because he was the best one. We had other trainers in finance and nutritional marketing and food safety, but he was the most exciting one. Nice. Can I just add that um, persons who are interested can go to our website, helensdaughters.org, and sign up. Um, you know, when we think about women in agriculture, sometimes, you know, women are at the, not sometimes, but most times women are at the, the back, you know, or they're in the supporting roles. But what we've seen through Helen's Daughters is that we are literally changing the narrative of who is a female in agriculture. Mm -hmm. She can look pretty, she can have nice nails, she can be dressed down, she can have an office job and have a farm, she can have she can be a dog mom. She can have five children. You know, once you are interested in yeah. um, 
agriculture, no matter your profession, no matter your degrees, no matter your life experiences, um, you can join us. We've seen persons who join just because they're curious. You know, they've seen what we're doing. They want to know more. And they caught the, the bug of, you know, planting and growing their own. And then there are others who have a vision already before they join Helen's Daughters. So even if you're just curious, even if you have a vision, even if you are still hesitant about what I wanna do in agriculture, um, you can join us. Um, and we see that, you know, when our women are empowered, our men become empowered as well, yes. because we, we influence the family and our partners. So it's really a generation of change um, that we are seeing. And we don't want anyone to discount themselves and say that I am not, you know, I'm, I'm qualified enough or interested yes. enough um, to join Helen's Daughters. Then, Tracy, I'm going to direct this question to you. We just spoke with a representative from the Bureau of Standards here in St. Kitts. How closely does Helen Daughter work with the Bureau of Standards in the islands that they are located? Absolutely. We believe in partnerships. So, you know, we cannot do this work alone. Um, and it, we're above the advocacy work, we're thinking and keeping on the agenda um, policy change um, and what that would look like for each island. Um, so our executive team, um, we are in consultation and discussions with the ministries, um, with the bureaus on the islands, uh, with the organizations that control the money on the island um, to have agriculture in the agenda so that we can at least be outside of the advocacy part of it the doing the nice things and the launch, we are literally thinking about how can we make living affordable for the people on the islands and how can we elevate our women um, who are part of our groups so that they can um, have um, sustainable practices and an income. So partnerships are welcomed as well. Um, there are persons who might be hearing this and you want to you know, partner with us in any way whether it's through education, whether it's through finance, whether it's through sponsorship, um, we are open to those discussions um, in addition to what we are already doing. All right, so we have, uh, as we close this interview, a short video that we're going to take a look at, which showcases Helen's daughters. Uh, let's take a look at it. actually came from the days when I lived with my grandmother and she always had a backyard garden growing tomatoes, herbs, sweet potatoes, yams, bananas, just everything. So when I had my own home, I actually had a backyard garden which started in 2012. Eventually, this particular asset, this piece of land, I inherited from my dad and we came up with the idea of starting this farm. So it started one year ago in September of 2021 where we now have passion fruits which were actually planted on the 21st of December 2021. So far we have reaped passion fruits and also we have some which are now on the vines. In addition to passion fruits, we've also grown sweet potatoes, sweet peppers, tomatoes, and we also had a crop of butternut squash. Today, you can see the sorrel on the farm, as well as other plants like bananas, and we have some sweet cassavas and peanuts. 